Hello there, this is Aaron Shore, and you are listening to Movie Phone Call, a podcast show recorded on my iPhone. Today will be the very first episode where we'll be discussing the new Alexander Payne dramedy, The Descendants. Sorry to bother you, I'm Matt King. Yeah, I've come to pick up my daughter, Alexandra. Alex? Dad? <laughs> What's up, Dad? <laughs> What's happening? You need to come home and see your mom. I'm the backup parent, the understudy. I thought you were supposed to be getting your act together. I've been doing really well, actually. Nobody ever seems to notice that. And with Elizabeth, my wife, in the hospital, my daughters are testing me. Look who's here. Get out of my underwear, you freak. Oh, OK. Don't Back inside them. now. Real good job you're doing. We have to go through this thing together, you and Scotty and me. Dad, this is Sid. He's gonna be with me. I'll be a lot more civil with him around. Set, bro. Don't ever do that to me again. I have to go around and tell people what's happening, family and a few close friends. I don't want to talk about mom with anyone. Look, whatever you two fought about, you have to drop it. Grow up. You really don't have a clue, do you? Dad, mom was cheating on you. So I had the opportunity to see this uh, <clears throat> just recently, and um, well, first I have to say that uh, Alexander Payne is definitely one of my uh, top ten favorite directors working. Well, he has this way of writing heavy dramatic pieces with the you know, interlaying the comedy portion quite nicely, telling stories about average Joes, uh, psychotic high school bitches, you know, election, and. Um, drug addicted pregnant women so um i've come to the understanding that um his last three films including the descendants would qualify as a, a trilogy of his i call it the men of lost souls trilogy you first have about schmidt from 1999 um and then you have in 2002 uh was sideways and um most people thought that was just a movie about uh how to have good wine and then came finally, this past fall, uh, The Descendants. My name is Warren R. Schmidt. I am 66 years old and recently retired. Helen and I have been married 42 years. Don't dilly dally. Lately, I find myself asking the same question. Who is this old woman who lives in my house? In uh, About Schmidt, we followed... Um, character named Warren Schmidt, who uh, just you know, recently retired from uh, a long-time uh, job of his in uh, Minnesota, I believe. <clears throat> and, um, you know, he, for spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen the movie, he is a man who just recently loses his wife and uh, his daughter, um, who he doesn't really have a close relationship with, uh, decides to, well, she doesn't decide, but, you know, relationships take their toll and they take us into different journeys and she decides to marry uh, her longtime boyfriend who is a waterbed salesman from Colorado and Warren knows that uh, he uh, he knows that his daughter can do a hell of a lot better than this joker he basically comes to pitch Warren that he wants to do a, a pyramid scheme with him but he keeps telling him it's not a pyramid scheme it's not a pyramid scheme a lot of people think it's a pyramid scheme but it's not People used to raise their eyebrows because I breastfed him until he was almost five. And I say, well, you just look at the results. And uh, the movie really is, you know, about a man stuck in the middle of loss and you know, trying to figure out what life is throwing at him. Let me show you how this is done. Hold the glass up and examine the wine against the light. You're looking for color and clarity. Now, stick your nose in it. Maybe some strawberry. Mm. Oh, there's just a flutter of like a like a nutty Edam cheese. When do we drink it now? Mmm. Are you chewing gum? No. Oh. Spit it out. And then we come to Sideways. That film is about a man who is lost in depression. Um, the main character, what I mean by is um Miles, played by Paul Giamatti. 
a man who's lost in depression. He's sort of yearning for his own self-happiness, but at the same time, he's stuck with his best friend Jack on a, you know, a bachelor's weekend getaway before Jack is sent off to be married. Jack subtly finds ways to ruin his happiness without really realizing it until, until the last act of the film. Dad, this is a uh, Sid. Oh, Sid. Sup, bro? Don't ever do that to me again. Get ready, we're gonna go see your grandparents. And Scotty, Auntie Esther's gonna come watch you. Dad, Sid's coming with us, okay? Yeah, listen, Sid, uh, what's going on this week is really a family matter. You understand? Sid's not going to be interested in meeting your grandparents. He's going to be bored stiff. Dad, I told you that he was going to be with me. I'll be a lot more civil with him around. What can I say? And now, finally, we come into The Descendants, uh, about a man who is stuck in paradise, uh, Hawaii, and the movie opens actually in a very interesting way where he tells the audience in his narration that many people think that um, because they live in Hawaii, it's a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week vacation away from your problems. And far from it from the case. In my notes, I even uh, wrote down when I saw the film that it cleverly portrays um, what he says. The film portrays you know shots of... Um, Homeless people, uh, five o'clock traffic on the highway, shacks, you know, very, um, you know, basic mainland stuff that, uh, you know, that, that's going on around us. And it is happening in Hawaii, too. George Clooney plays um, Matt King, who is a real estate lawyer, and he is the sole trustee from his family owning the last piece of uh, virgin land in Kauai, Hawaii. That uh, him and his his army of cousins uh, that appear in the movie. Oh, I've never seen so many cousins in my life in a movie like this. But going off topic, um, so he's a real estate lawyer who is selling off the last piece of land that his family has entrusted him with, and he is the the sole trustee of uh, the property. It originally belonged to his father, but his father passed away, and in his will it was left to to Matt. In the middle of all this, trying to sell off the land. His wife recently just ended up in a boating accident and has ended up in a coma. She is in a very, you know, vegetated state, if you will. Her, she's not responsive, and the doctors basically, they, they come forward and tell him that um, there's nothing they can do for her, and they're going to have to take her off life support. So he has to deal with the fact that he's going to be losing his wife. He has to tell his estranged daughters and the rest of his family about what's next for his wife. Later on in the film, Matt decides to bring back his oldest daughter back from a, a private school, which is located in Maui, uh, played by uh, Shalene Woodley. Uh, she comes home, reluctantly, of course, and she confronts her father that the reason why she is so against the fact of coming home and confronting her mother is that they were having a fight over her Christmas break, and the fight had to do with the fact that Matt's wife was cheating on him. Major spoilers? Probably not, but you've seen it in the trailers. If you haven't seen the trailer, that basically tells you that's what the movie's about. His wife, who was in a coma, cheats on him. Uh, the rest of the movie, the family, uh, decide to take a trip to Kauai to find this man and confront him. Everything is sort of in closing in on Matt and... Uh, He's dealing with the fact that he doesn't know how he'll be a good parent once his wife is officially gone. His littlest, uh, Scotty, who is a bit of a rambunctious child, who will basically, you know, um, f you know, is always a follower, not a leader. She will act up. She texts one of her classmates that she has, uh, or texts the the girl that uh, this girl is, you know hitting puberty a little too soon. It kind of hurt her feelings. And there's this really funny scene where Matt receives a phone call from that mother about the text, and they have to go over and apologize. And it's quite a, it's quite delightful. <laughs> Not delightful, but it's a very funny scene. Uh, classic sort of parenthood debacles with their children and how parents clash. And then they uh, bring the sort of um, 
well, um, guilt trip onto Matt because this woman who is a local, much like Matt is, saying that by selling that last piece of land could create a lot of trafficking in Hawaii and mainly a lot of people don't want the land to be sold off. Because if the land is sold, it'll create hotels and, and golf courses and just it creates more trafficking for Hawaii, more tourists, which, you know, if you think about it, it's actually good for that economy, bringing more business, but, you know, 